But there's a difference between a fact and an opinion. And right now, I'm dealing with facts. And those facts are more than frustrating. They're infuriating. And I really hope that by the end of this, that you are just as infuriated about this as I am. That you are just as mad and that you share and that you stand up for everybody else. That's my phone's ringing, whatever. That you stand up because we all have someone in our lives. Everybody out there, you know someone. You either have you know, a friend, a cousin, a sister, whatever, that needs help of some sort. Think of them. Whether you hate me or not, I don't care. Think of them and share this for them. Because this stuff is bananas. Yes. Social development purposely messes things up to not give people on disability what they need and deserve. I already have a whole video about all that. Whether you watch or not, I don't care. But I will go again on what the province of New Brunswick and social development have as criteria for disabled. It has nothing to do with being able to work or not, by the way. It's, can you walk up and down stairs unassisted? Can you bathe yourself unassisted? And can you feed yourself unassisted? If you can do all of those, Technically, you're not disabled. You should be able to go out there and work 90 hours a week like that last person just left me a message saying that I should get off my butt and do. So I look, okay. And this is why a lot of you have a problem because you don't see the bad part. Nobody wants to hear negative. You all want us to be sunshine and rainbows all the time. What does that give us? Sunshine and rainbows are like thoughts and prayers. They don't solve anything. Yes, that's the maximum amount you can have unless you did work for a while and your CPP is higher than that. 763. I have to have a part-time job. I'm lucky that I have one that, you know, gives me a few hours here and there because without it, I can't pay my bills. I would be homeless. And I'm maxed out because I even get more than that. I get more than 763. And that is relevant to everything that I'm saying here. I get the food supplement. There is one. $40 a month. That's it. That's what the government will give you. $40 a month if you have to eat gluten-free, preservative-free, if you're on chemo, whatever. So anybody out there who is celiac that has to follow the gluten-free diet, you know darn well that $40 a month does not buy you groceries. A loaf of bread that's gluten-free is about six to seven dollars and it's frozen and it has like 12 slices again this is my story but i'm standing up for everybody else out there that doesn't have a voice the ones that can't speak up the ones that don't understand because it's complicated it is and they're purposely making it complicated and they're purposely making it that way so that people will give up and not try to apply for disability and that i know for a fact because I had someone at social development tell me that to my face when I applied the second time when we called them out on not following their own legislature. Did you know that? They have rules. This is the second time. Well, this is the third time, actually. The second time I found them not following their own rules, the next day, they were suddenly changed. Whole other story. Let's get to the point. The point is that I am trying to find out where that $48 million went. Now, Charlie at the Humanity Project, you don't like me. I don't care. However, he should be able to be a big boy, put his big girl panties on, and work with everybody. Because his thing is to end homelessness and get affordable housing. Why aren't you asking this question to the government, Charlie? Why aren't you asking? I found the documents because they're on the internet for anybody to find. And they will be linked under here. And what that document is, is that the government was given $48 million to spread over five years to get more affordable housing. Where the heck is it? Where? Like, buddy, Humanity Project, you're the one telling everybody there's a homeless problem. You speak to the homeless every day because you feed them. You know where the tent cities are. You know why they're there. Are you trying to tell me that their stats in this picture that I have under here they, they've somehow taken 5,000 people 
and take them off the streets and put them into homes? Where? Which 5,000 people? Because if you think about it, there's major cities, pretty much, you know, there's Moncton, Ferdinand, St. John, and then Mary Machi, and, and Edmonston, I guess. But the big problem is mostly in the south, because, you know, that's where the population is. So, unless all those 5,000 people were housed in St. John, which I know aren't, because I actually saw a post about homelessness being a problem in St. John today. So, I was looking where that was. Because they also said that during, you know, because, again, these stats are only for between 2016 to 2017. I haven't even looked at the other years. I'm too mad to go there. But I guess in 2016 to 2017, they housed more than 5,000 people off the street. I, I still see them on the street. I don't know where they went. And they also created 150 new rental units for affordable housing. Where are they? I'm asking. I want to physically see them. Because just because you write on a little piece of paper to say this is where my money went, um, I need the proof. I, I want to see where it is because I don't believe you. And you know why I don't believe you? Because I can prove it. Again, I'm talking for every other person that's out there. Because it started with me reading the article that was written in 2016. That person in that article is in a wheelchair, and she just gets the $763 a month. Do you know how hard it is to live off $763 a month? It's impossible without subsidized housing, which I can't get, which is the whole subject of what's going on that I'm talking about. So yeah, I have an apartment, and everyone's like, oh yeah, but lots of stuff. Yeah. You know why? Because I'm super, super lucky that I have a one-bedroom apartment with a rent of five fifty a month with everything included. Try to find that. <clears throat> Try to find that somewhere else. I, I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, even if I were to, you know, move out of my apartment and get a bachelor, which was what I was before I moved up here when this guy left because I was in the basement, I paid 500 a month with everything included. If I want to rent a room, it's pretty much the same thing. Where do I put all my stuff? Do I sell it all? Those are human rights. I'm a human being. And a lot of you out there, again, you have family members that are in my situation. So think about what they deserve. Think about what you want for them. Don't think about me. Don't think about me. Think about them and be angry for them about what I'm about to tell you. <clears throat> Today, I called. I wanted to know where those units were. And I eventually got myself to the supervisor for housing. Her name is Jessica Forbes. And if you would like to contact her, her phone number is 856-3100. Call her if you have questions. I, I implore you to, please do. Because when I called her, she says, well, by the way, um, your application for indie housing is inactive. Uh, why? Well, you didn't do your renewal. I'm thinking, what? But, I have help. But, I do get help. And I have support workers that are paid for by social development. Because I am listed as a long-term needs client under the disability. So those people have helped me with a lot of things, including organizing stuff. So when she talked about that page that I should have gotten, I remembered. I did get it. And then I tried to explain to her that... Now, as per Jessica Forbes and the notes written by Miss Denise LeBlanc, I have her name because she told me what her name was. Um, yeah. That... The notes say that I didn't give them all the information. The thing is is that they didn't want it. Ah! Oh my gosh, you all think I'm lying, right? Guess what? The proof is gonna be in here too. So, on March 29th, 2018, I called. And I called twice. Because the first time, the lady hung up on me. 
the second time. By then, I would have my DBT skills. I'm pretty good. So, the person who was speaking, I didn't know her name at the time. So the first thing that I needed to let them know of was changes in my income. However, my personal caseworker, she is amazing and tries so hard to help me with everything they have. So she keeps everything updated and I'm not putting her name in here because she works hard and, and so does her supervisor. So they're there for me. So yes, the changes in my income have already been inputted. That didn't happen. The second thing was change in my household composition. Well, I'm still just me. I ain't having no children. I mean, I like kids. I just can't have any. So that wasn't a thing. The second one was medical and physical mobility issues. And keep in mind, this is March. My kidneys were still failing. My liver still wasn't very good. My esophagus problem still wasn't there. However, however, I do have to add the however, because this was March 29th, where according to Jessica Forbes, I did not give them the information that I needed and um, it was closed. However, however, again, I know there's a lot of howevers because in April, which time-wise is after March 29th, right? I received, I started receiving, as in it was approved that I have the dietary supplement because my gastroenterologist told them that I have a disease and that I have to eat gluten-free, preservative-free, all that kind of whatnot-free. And guess what? They approved that part. However, according to Jessica Forbes, I never gave them that information. What? No. So yeah, I tried to tell them all that. The, this lady would not take it. She said, no, you can't tell me that. You need to have the paper in your hand from your doctor to tell you what condition you have. What? No. First of all, anybody who's ever dealt with anything with social development knows the doctor do not give you notes because one, you could alter them. Two, sometimes they don't give you the answer that you want. You're not supposed to see that part. The person in the middle, the client, they don't get papers from doctors. It goes directly to them. Social development has a, they have like their own facts that's just for that. But I still needed it. And when I was talking to her that morning, it was about 10 o'clock in the morning. So at one point she asked me if by the end of the day, if I could physically have the letters from my doctors, which was my psychiatrist and my gastroenterologist, if I could have them by the end of the day in my hand, she would accept it. My answer was yes, I can. And I really could, because my psychiatrist is at the Dumont in the old part. And across the street is where Dr. Valger is, my gastroenterologist. I could have gotten my letters with him that day. So she got mad. And I was really mad. And I was frustrated. And when I get frustrated at that time, my mom was still part of my life. Nobody would believe me, so I kind of had to rely on her. So I told this lady, you know what? I'm frustrated. I don't get this. My mom will call you tomorrow. Her answer was, and that's why I know her name. She said, well, I'm Denise Leblanc, and I used to be your caseworker, and I'm not afraid of your mother. What? My mom calling you is not a threat. My mother calling you is just to help things. Because at that time, maybe I was too emotional to be able to explain correctly what I'm trying to say. Or maybe I was too emotional to understand correctly what she was trying to say to me. So all I was saying is that someone else with a cooler, clearer mind is going to call and ask the questions and clear up the air. No, that did not happen. They hung up on me. And this is where the problem starts and ends and whatnot. Because after that, I did talk to my mom. We still spoke. I also spoke to my caseworker. And the email happened. I have the email. I will post the whole thing under. I have nothing to hide. Now, I don't have the whole entire conversation between my mom and Diane Casey, who happens to be like the top top, I think. So yes, my mom did find her in the government hierarchy website before she retired because she used to work for the government. She used to be a workers' comp advocate. So she has an idea. She can read legislation. So that's why, you know, 
we figured out they were lying the first two times. Anyway, move on. So, this is written in French. I will read it in English, but it will be written in French down there. So, my mom says, good morning, Mrs. Diane. Following our last conversation on the phone on the 21st of March, 2018, Chantal, me, has let me know that on the 29th of March, 2018, my letter, and there is an email from my worker was sent to Rebecca Roussel, who at the time apparently was in charge of NB housing or something, explaining this whole situation about them not wanting to let me update my file as per annual review of application and I did take off my file number. Okay, you don't need to know that much stuff about me. So in this email, my mom's also saying that there is a letter already written from my psychiatrist attached that I need this apartment here subsidized instead of moving into their unit. This is my bathroom floor. Yeah. Maybe you understand now why my rent is 550. All right. Back to this email. So yes, my mom is telling her that there is a letter from my psychiatrist I'm talking about here. And then it says that my worker has confirmed that she has sent all that information to NB Housing Supervisor Rebecca Roussel and that I am waiting for an answer from Rebecca Roussel. I never got one. But that was on April 11th. April 11th. So today I was told by Jessica that I did not give all the information and that it was closed on the 29th of March. Now, now I have a hard time with dates and stuff, but I do know that April 11th is after March 29th. I'll let you do your own math, okay? You can figure it out. I, I'm confident you guys are smart enough to figure that out. And yes, the light is dying, but you know, they're poor. What do you want to do? People with disabilities are people too. People that have addiction problems are people too. So all of you out there that tell them that they have to get up their butts and that whole thing that we just read about them trying to beautify the park, you know, that's not going to solve the problem. I'm so happy that someone spoke out about that today. It's true. Cutting down the trees is not going to solve the fact that people don't have a place to live. They're not woody woodpecker. They can't live in the freaking tree. The fact that there's a drug problem, unfortunately, there's a drug problem all over the world. There, no one is immune to drug problem. Mostly not when it comes to opiates because they give them for pain. Sometimes they kind of don't have a choice. Sometimes it's the only thing that will work for pain. They're addictive. If I can guarantee you the millions of dollars that I'm looking for, the $48 million that not one person has ever woke up in the morning and thought, hmm, I think I'm going to shoot up some heroin today. I'm going to become a junkie. No. I know enough of them. I've talked to them. That's not their preferred lifestyle. It's called an addiction for a reason. And even after they get clean, if they do, they still live with that for their whole lives. I have friends that have relapsed. Gosh, it breaks my heart. I don't even want to go there again. We're people. We deserve respect. We do. Because we try hard. That's, we're doing the best that we can. Now, that said, I am aware that there are people out there that screw the system, that cheat and lie. And they anger me just as much as it angers you. Because it makes it harder. It makes stuff like this happen to people who actually really need it. The people who are in wheelchairs. Hello? If you read that article that's listed, I'll link it below. The person, and I remember actually this story when that house fire happened. She had MS. She could not physically get herself out. Do you know how freaking scary that is? 
that the only apartment, the only place lodging that you can afford, because all the government will give you is $763 a month. You know that if something were to happen, and in this case it did, there's a fire that you cannot physically get yourself out on your own. Do you know how scary that is? That everybody else that understands, because I know there's some of you that are out there, please share, get this out there. I want to get answers, not only for myself, because this it will be answered by tomorrow. Trust me, the emails are sent, thanks. I gotta go put this together to put it out there because I promised you that it would be out there in an hour. And again, if you're pissed off, good. If you're angry at me and you want to share this just because you want people to laugh at me, go for it. Go for it. Because in there, there will be at least one or two people that will get my message. And that's all I want. But I'm saying, talk about it. Share it. Do something for all the other people out there that can't speak up for themselves. For those of them who can't.